right, this is Floor Framing with Mr. Tim Chank, and today we're going to be talking about joists and everything that's involved with that. So last, where we left off was we talked about the mud sill, and we had to talk about that because we were discussing the anchor bolts that are have to be placed into the foundation wall before it is dried yet. Um, when you're pouring a concrete, and that's so you can anchor down your mud sill. And remember, your mud sill has to be made out of pressure treated wood. It's usually a two by eight, and then um, you have to put your sill sill down first. All right. So this is your a picture of just how when you're placing your anchor bolts, so you can see that that's still wet concrete. But here's your sill sill. All right. So you have your anchor bolt that's in the concrete. You literally just poke your sill sill over your bolt and then put the 2 by uh, 8 treated wood, that's your mud sill, right on top, and then you anchor it down. So what that sill sill does is that it prevents that airflow from getting in between your mud sill and your foundation wall, and it really seals that ga gasket up. So the less air coming in from the outside, the better in your house. All right, so what we have here is we have um you know someone measuring for their anchor bolts because you have to measure pretty accurately and to, to drill your holes so your anchor bolts can slide through your mud cell that's a slow way of doing it the fastest way of doing it is just lay it on top where you want it hit this with a hammer and then that leaves a little indentation from the um, bolt and then that is exactly the spot where you're going to drill at. So that's how that works. So once you have the hole, you place the sill on and then you fasten down the bolts and the washers. The large square washers like this work the best, but sometimes you can just get around ones. It all depends what you got available. And then you just fasten it down and with an impact wrench and you're good to go. This is unlike any other kind of impact that we use on an impact driver, but this is an impact wrench. And you put sockets on this um, end here, and that's how you fasten down large nuts. All right, that's just Larry Hahn's video here. I'll put that attached to the lesson. All right, so say you did not put your anchor bolts in in the right locations, or maybe you need another one somewhere to attach your plate, you can use something called a wedge anchor. And this is something that you can use to fasten down your mud sill after the concrete has been poured. So here it is right here. It's a, it's a lot like the anchor bolts, but um, it has this sleeve at the end and that gets um, push down when you hammer it into the hole that you drill in the concrete and it literally wedges itself into the concrete. So you drill the hole first, all right, clear it out, hammer the bolt in until that sleeve goes down and is nice and tight and then you tighten it up and then it's good to go. So wedge anchor bolts uh, work really well if you need to put one in or if you already have the concrete poured and didn't put any anchors in, you can just do this all right, it just takes a little more work because you got to drill it out. All right, so once you get the mud sill all on, you got to cut out the mud sill where your girders are going to be. And now your girders are going to be the same equal height as the mud sill. So what he's measuring right here is how much he has to shim up for his 2 by looks like, that looks like a 2 by 12 girder to be the equal height of the mud sill right there. And you can see on all these pictures, the girder here, it's all shimmed up and it's equal to the mud sill. You can see right here, it's all equal. You have your pocket here. This is your build up girder and it's shimmed up to be equal to the mud sill. Here it is right here. All right. That's just a good close up of how to make a uh, girder, a built up girder. All right, so installing these girders into these pockets isn't always easy, especially with a, just a two-man crew. So you can get one of these telehandlers, and you chain it up to a girder, and you place it in. With only two people, it's really hard to lift something that heavy, and it's not very safe. So if you can get a telehandler, that'd be much safer. This is the telehandler right here. 
Um, you can have forks up here and that'll help you and that kind of moves any material that you want. All right, you can see here, this is a steel I-beam that they have that they're setting right now. Steel I-beams are super heavy. You definitely want some kind of um, telehandler or machinery to haul those around. And this is putting a big LVL sandwich together. This is actually two LVLs together and they're looks like they're about to place it in the uh, house here on the second floor and the same here. All right, and that's what it looks like installed. And you can see they kind of put this in before the mud sill and you can see, but it's already shimmed up to the height that they need it. All right, if you have that steel I-beam though, you have to have wood on top so you can nail your joists on. Um, you can't have your joists just laying on top of the steel I-beam because there's nothing to nail to. And what you use is a ram set, all right? It shoots a uh, steel pin using this 22 caliber shot, um, powder shot to fire a pin that looks like this. And you can literally attach this wood to steel. And so you can put your joist right on top and start nailing that on. And you can see that this was attached to the uh, joist by those pins. And you, now you can nail your joist right on top. So girders are then, um, like I said, shimmed to the a height uh, of the mud sill, and then you have you just put your posts underneath and you fasten those on. All right, now talking about the joists themselves. So right here we have the band or rim joist, and that is kind of like your bottom or top plate to your wall, which all the joists are attached to. Now these are usually two by tens or two by twelves. All right, more commonly two by ten tens, and the rim joists are marked for um, the joist location. So it's just like marking your top or bottom plate. You're marking your rim joist for all your spacing, such as 16 or 24 inches on center. So there it is, right there, your rim joist, and it's all your joists right here for your floor are being nailed in there. All right, you nail on your rim joist just like this. All right, you're toe nailing it and a lot of toe nailing going on and that's how you fasten them down. All the joists running between the rim joists are just your regular horizontal joists. All right, and it holds up your flooring system. And so your layout has to be all stacked on one another. So you have wherever your studs are, that's where your joist is and then you then that's where your stud is again for your second floor. And then again, that's where your rafters all sitting. So all that weight is all transferred to solid material. So from the studs to the joists, the studs to the rafters, everything is stacked on center the same as you need it. All right, that's kind of our, just like this floor frame here, right here, going up, that's what we want. All right, joist layout is marked on the rim joist in the mud sill. Um, you can see in the girder if you need to, but that's how it's all laid out. All right. So which way do the joists go on your structure? Well, they always go the shortest side. So you want your joists always going to the side that is the shortest. So if it's 70 by 50, um, building, you want it running parallel to that 50 foot wall. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One is that so you don't um, need such long running and in, in, um, staggered joists running this way, and then you'd need a bunch of uh, beams running across. This way, you can just have one girder all the way across, and then you can just lay and stagger um, your joists. And your joists are usually only maximum 20 feet long. So you don't want to have to go, you know, 70 feet. So you need like a whole bunch of supports and girders. This way you only have one girder holding up most of the, all of the uh, uh, floor joists. They, that's why they need to be staggered here. All right. And that's what that they're doing because the joists aren't usually long enough to go the entire way of your uh, width of your house. So that's why they're usually staggered and overlapped. And so you also have to mark up your girders because they're staggered and to keep that on-center spacing. And you can see them overlapping. 
This is a beautiful picture here of all the overlapping of the joists. All right, to uh, install these joists efficiently, you can do something called rolling the joists. Um, which you set them on your girder and your foundation wall, and then you set them all crown up, and then you just flip them over, and then you just kind of go about um, installing your joists, and it goes a lot faster that way. The crown of the joist does have to go up because if it's already down, then the floor is going to sag. And when you put weight on it, such as your partition walls, it's just going to sag even more. So it's really important that you have your floor joist with crowning up. And so you just have them all crowned up in one direction, and then you just go about it and put all your um, joists up. All right, joists are then nailed to the rim and the mud sill, and they're toe nailed into the mud sill, but they usually got about five or six nails into your end nailed into your rim joist. You can see here it's end nailed into the rim. And you just nail it in right there. And you can nail it in right here to your uh, mud sill. All right, like you said, when over the girders, you nail it in just like this. You nail the two overlap together and you nail it into the girder. Like I said, it's a heck of a lot of nailing. One thing you do have to do if on your top of your partition walls is to put your double, uh, we call them a doubler or two joists together so you can support a partition wall. Um, especially if a partition wall falls between two joists, you're going to want to put a doubler there. That's why it's good to have your whole entire plan for your house. So you're just, when you're framing, you're constantly looking forward and seeing what's going to go where so you can um, prepare for what's coming next and frame it correctly. So you need to double it up if a partition wall is going to be located directly above it so to support that load weight. All right, and the different types of eye, eye joists, you have this one right here. This is an eye joist. Um, you have a two by on either end top and bottom and then you have uh, OSB there and they're manufactured and you can order them to different lengths you can cut them the size though um, the benefit of them there they are right here uh, they can span quite a uh, length and you can get a manufactured to a, a pretty long lengths um, they're nice and straight there's no crowning really necessary they're easy to drill through with the OSB in the middle for your electrical HVAC plumbing. And some even come with some pre-cut holes, kind of like this right here. These were all pre-cut, and you can run your HVAC through it. And you can see how much you can get all your uh, electrical plumbing and HVAC all up into your floor joist so they're not um, taking up room in overhead. So like I said, it's easy to cut the holes. You can have multiple sizes of it and you can have you can have pretty long spans with it so if you really want something super strong and you have to have wide openings with limited support floor trusses are the way to go um, they're manufactured uh, using two by four lumber and they kind of create this webbing that you can run your plumbing and electrical through they're uh, great if like for a shed or a barn that you don't want a bunch of posts holding up your floor joist so because you, you can have such a great span and then uh they're pretty expensive and you and you have to uh order them specifically what you're using it for and um it's kind of a negative about it is that you have to cut them uh they cannot be modified all that easily i mean you can do it but say like one spot you need either some shorter ones or something like that. It's you kind of have to take it apart and put it back together. And there they are. That's kind of how you install them right there. Um, super, they're super nice. You can fit all your HVAC and all your plumbing and electrical through them, but uh, they're a little pricey. So you can use either use solid lumber, which is like two by tens, two by twelves. You can use an eye joist or open web trusses. And that is all about Joyce.